Welcome back to our channel. Mm -hmm. For today's video, we will be sharing Raya's birth story. Yes. She was technically two two weeks and two days late because she was. I was forty two weeks and two days pregnant before she came. That's a I long didn't, time. I didn't go into labor forty weeks on my own. I wasn't dilated at all i wasn't effaced um nothing um she was head down before 36 weeks she was in position um on time and everything um my cervix just was not budging so they decided to induce my pregnancy was went really well the whole time there weren't there weren't any complications along the way um and then at 40 weeks is when they um, they were like, okay, if you don't go into labor next week or the, in the 41st week, then we'll induce you. So I didn't go into labor. So then we set the induction date and then we got there and um, I wanted to do it to give birth unmedicated. Um, I also had a doula and she was amazing. Um, and I had been preparing like for birth. We took classes couple classes I took individual classes on my own um, breastfeeding classes everything I tried almost all the natural ways to induce labor so I tried the dates I tried the tea I tried the inversions I tried the I tried I, I tried I even did acu, 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 I even did acupuncture um, which was a great experience but that didn't do anything either um, I don't even know how long it was, but it was uh, a very yeah. long and frustrating process and it was extremely painful. It's long story short, after like being in labor for really breathing well, because the contractions were so close together, Raya wasn't getting enough oxygen uh, because one, my placenta was old um, because I was so, I was pregnant for so long and that's the risk with um, being that overdue is that the placenta gets old thus um, not giving the baby enough oxygen so she wasn't getting enough oxygen especially during contractions which I guess were too strong for her um, because I was having a hard time breathing because contractions are intense to say the least um, anyways all through the night we kept watching like on the monitors her heart rate kept dropping they would have me like turn on my side change positions to try to help um, with that, but nothing really seemed to alleviate that. Um, and I remember at one point when I was having really bad contractions, um, <laughs> Joseph was like, um, babe, let me pray for you. And I was in the middle of a contraction and I was like, shh. <laughs> I was just trying to be nice, <laughs> trying to be a loving husband. And she was like, shh, not now. <laughs> um, and yeah, contractions are, are, are crazy, guys. I don't I don't even know how to describe it. But um, the next day, uh, my doula finally got there. Um, and when they checked my cervix, I was only like three, almost three centimeters. So I'd been in labor for over like 12 hours. And mm -hmm. I was only barely three centimeters. With the, the pill um, that they put up, they put like in my cervix and then they did that two doses of that um and then they stopped because they're like if it's not working then it's probably not gonna work so then they with the balloon um my contractions were too painful it was making the contractions worse um more painful anyways and it was the next day they came in and um they're like, we think if you were able to relax, you would be able to breathe better, thus giving the baby more oxygen. Um, so they gave me like a, some kind of a pain med that was not an epidural that just to kind of take the edge off. And that helped um, for like, alleviate the pain for like an hour. And then after that, it just wears off. And the more they do it, the less effective it is. So they gave me two doses of that. And then um, after that, that was all they could do because it wasn't working anymore. So then um, a bit later, they were like, um, do you, we recommend that you get an epidural to um, help you relax and 
um, hopefully breathe better, giving the baby more oxygen. I was like, okay, so we did the epidural. I mean, though I did not want to, I was really desperate to keep, to keep her breathing well, but also I was really determined to do, um, obviously to like bring my baby into the world and to do so safely. Um, and if that meant me relaxing with an epidural, I wanted to do that. So they gave me the epidural and y'all, after I got the epidural, I was like, why didn't I do this from the very second I got in here? Like labor started. Like the instant they induced me, I should have got been, gotten the epidural because I was like, wow, this is amazing. I feel so good. But unfortunately, she was still having a hard time because even though I felt um, the pain was alleviated for me, the contractions were still um, going on as frequently as they were. And she was still having a hard time getting oxygen. So after a few hours of her heart rate still dropping, um, I remember all the doctors being in my room and my doula being there too. And they're all talking and trying to like figure out like, do we break her water? Do we, um, like, what do we do now? Do we try to put another balloon up there? Um, but nobody was saying it because of my birth plan. I guess, I don't know why they didn't say it, but I was like, would, but they were, they, okay, they all kept consistently saying that they were worried about her heart rate, that it made them uncomfortable, that her heart rate kept dropping. Um, <laughs> and the duration of that going on so finally i was like would the safest would the safest option be a c-section and they all agreed yes um and they explained that whole thing to me and they um and they told me i remember the one of the doctors was like this does not make you any less of a mom um you getting a c-section is not the easy way out um you're still a good mom this is the safest thing for your baby and you. And that was really like helpful. And so they prepped me for the C-section and then I went in. Um, and when I got in there, Joseph didn't go with me because beforehand, mm -hmm. um, our doula told us that it can be really hard for like husbands um, to be in there because you can smell the, um, the burning when they um the burning of the flesh pretty when much. they burn i guess to to cut um to cut the skin and stuff and the muscle or whatever and so um we decided that it was better for him not to go in there because i wasn't trying to have him pass out or be traumatized um but anyway so he didn't go in there my doula went in with me i think if i didn't have a doula i would have definitely needed him in there but my doula was in there with me and she was amazing so we go in there and all I remember is my anesthesiologist was like this really nice guy. He was so nice. Uh, made me feel super confident in him and um, that he knew what he was doing. And then the staff in the OR were also really fun. Like I remember going in there and being um, not really nervous actually. I was kind of just at peace about it. Just kind of looking around and thinking, I never thought I'd be in a room like this. But there was this um, this doctor that was, I think, Ethiopian or something, and she kept making jokes in her thick accent, and that was the best thing. That that brought me a lot of joy. <laughs> and then they started doing like the the skin like pain test. So they poke like my belly with something, and they're like, "Can you feel this?" And on my right side, I was like, "No, no, no." And as soon as they moved to my left side, I could feel I could feel what they were doing. And they were like, can you feel this? And I was like, yeah. So then the anesthesi anesthesiologist gave me more like more medicine in my in my IV. And I could feel it going down my back. It's like this cold like mist down your back. It wasn't doing anything. I could still feel it. And they kept asking me, probably like five times they kept asking me, can you feel this? And I was like, yeah, give me more medicine. Can you feel this? Yes. Give me more. Can you feel this? Yes. Give me more. And then at some point, I guess they started um, this, like the C-section. So they, they started cutting. And on my right side, I could feel like a feather. I could like feel almost like a feather, no pressure, no pain. Just like a, I could feel something was on my skin, but there was no sensation there really. And as soon as they crossed over a certain point, I could feel the cutting so I could feel like the knife or whatever they used um, cut my skin and then I felt this motion like I felt somebody do this to my stomach and I screamed um, I remember screaming and squeezing my doula's hand and then I guess they knocked me out because I was feeling everything 
the next thing I remember, I woke up to um, my anesthesiologist um, being like, Danielle, wake up, your baby is right there. And I just remember seeing Raya up in the little window. Um, she was screaming her head off, um, all covered in like this white um, substance. And she was the most perfect thing I'd ever seen. And then they took her and they cleaned her up and then they brought her and checked her vitals and everything like that while they were, um, I guess, closing me up. I couldn't feel anything at that point. So I don't know why they didn't do what they did before. But anyways, um, they brought her over and she was right here. And I guess I was so, so drowsy. Like, I was so drowsy. I just remember like going in and out of sleep. Um, so I remember like seeing her and then I fell back asleep. And then the next thing I, she was right here. And I, I guess how I kept saying like, my baby, my baby. Um, and I kept kissing her face. Um, and then they took her. Um, and then I fell asleep again, I guess, while they were finishing the surgery. Uh, and then after that, the next thing I remember is like being wheeled out of the room and going past this little room um, where Joseph was there with Raya. Um, and I looked over and I saw them too there. And then they took me to like the recovery room and that's where we stayed. Excuse me, we stayed for a little bit while they were getting the our postpartum room ready. Um, and yeah, I was really, really sleepy though. I remember the first moments with Raya um, holding her, just feeling super nervous because I was so drowsy. I just felt like I wasn't capable of, she wasn't safe with me, um, but the nurses were really reassuring and then they worked on helping me get her to latch. And she did pretty good and then we went to our recovery room. We were in the hospital for, from, it was a Monday. We got there on a Monday and we left on a Friday. Um, the first 24 hours, I couldn't get out of bed because I still, wait, could I? Do they let me get out of bed? No, I, I, they, no, I, like I didn't get out of, day. I didn't get out of bed um, that first 24 hours. Um, I only ate like liquids and like, your foods I think um, because of my c-section and also the epidural um, and then the next day they were really focused on trying to get me to stand up and walk um, and I was able to do it but the first time I stood up after the c-section terrifying I felt like my bottom half was like sawed off and then somebody like lightly stitched it back together and expected it to hold so literally like I had this binder on to try to kind of like keep everything Kind of give me extra support and i just remember walking and being in so much pain but being so determined determined to walk because they all told us that that was the best thing to do so yeah we worked at it and we just stayed at the hospital and mm -hmm. i got to bond so much with raya she she did she did well breastfeeding all aside from not she couldn't stay awake she just kept falling asleep she had um, a good amount of jaundice or jaundice was um, was kind of it wasn't it wasn't the worst but it was it was, getting it was there. definitely getting there so they were really worried and then I was also trying to get her to get back to her birth weight because she lost a lot of weight because that's what newborns do and then trying to breastfeed and my milk came in right away and it came in like a lot so I was in a lot of pain <laughs> I had a lot of milk um, and had to figure all that out. But yeah, everybody was really nice mm -hmm. and it was an overall good experience. So that's kind of a quick version of what happened. The C-section was definitely not, not planned, but it was the safest and best way to bring our girl yep, to yep, the yep. world. And that's all I wanted. Perfect. Came out with so much hair. And still has so much hair. It just keeps getting longer and thicker. And yeah, I was I was really thankful that I didn't have to have a baby in the NICU. I don't think I would have been able to handle that on top of all the other surprises. So I was thankful that she was able to be with me 24 seven. Yeah. Thank you for the hug. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the hug, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's
pretty much our birth story, you guys. Yep. How did I, you feel when it was all happening? I don't have... I mean, I, I didn't give birth. I just sat in the room. I just <laughs> waited. <laughs> um, I mean... Yeah, like when she was in the like the room getting the procedure done you know i was there for like a couple hours i think that's how long it took because they had to take her to a different room at one point i forgot why but um me yeah they moved it to like a different room what? yeah like in at some point like more in the beginning of it like when i went to when yeah. i went to when like, we the got to the room. hospital or when no when, the, when the, the surgery Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Maybe you were knocked out by then. Yeah. No, no, because oh. <laughs> you don't clearly don't remember. No, I don't. But yeah, and so because they came out, and I was like, "Oh crap, this is it, this is it." And then, and then the the nurse was was like, "Oh, we're, we're just moving her to a different." I'm like, "Oh, well, <laughs> well, then thank you." <laughs> but, it, took, um, it took a few hours to surgery. No, like, well, I waited for maybe. A, was it two hours? Maybe no, no. Oh I don't even shoot! I forgot to tell you guys. So it probably took longer because Raya kept putting her head back into my uterus. So I guess with the C-section, they first off they cut you really, really low, like right, like like really, really low, like your underwear. You can't even see it if you're like wearing a bathing suit. Um. I guess when they opened me up and were trying to get Raya out, also she's a big, she was a big baby for my body. She came out at eight pounds and six, four, six ounces. Six ounces. Um, so when they were trying to get her out, I guess what they do is they open you up and then the head, the baby's head is there. So then they pull the head out first, but they have to push on the upper abdomen to try to pop her head out. And they kept doing that. They did that, but Raya kept putting her head back into my uterus. She really did, she really did not want to come out. So then um, she did that three different times. So two <laughs> doctors, female doctors, I guess, were on top of my rib cage, pushing down to try to keep her head out so that they could actually, actually bring her out. Uh, my doula said that they kept saying, um, calling the time of birth like three times, but she kept putting her head back in. <laughs> so she really did not want to come out. So it probably took longer because of that. Also, when I came out and for the next, like for like almost two months, my ribs were really, really sore. Um, they were really badly bruised because of the pressure they had to put on my on my stomach to get her out. She made him work for it. Huh. He made him work for it. But yeah, so it was kind of, I guess, traumatic. So praise the Lord that I was out because yikes. Yeah, when she was getting induced, it was hard for me because... Um, the when they were doing the checking my cervix and they put the whole arm up there, probably an arm and a leg. No, honestly. no, no, not when they were checking it. When they put like the like the oh, clamp the, or the, whatever the, four, the the thing that opens you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they were doing that, they had like a a metal one, and they, they just... started with a they started with a plastic one, and that wasn't working. So they're like, she was like, I need a metal one, and I was like, oh great, the plastic one was painful. They got a metal. Mm -hmm. They got a metal one. Yeah, so they had a metal one, and um, yeah, they kept trying, and like she was in so much pain, like she was crying, and and then they kept like retrying and retrying, and it kept hurting like her more and more, like and I know when like something hurts for her, um, and it was like killing her, and I, <laughs> I was getting mad, like like I was. Just, keeping it in me but inside i just like kept saying like like can't you like get it right but i'm not a nurse i don't know i don't obviously i couldn't no but it, really but, couldn't they but like but no but seriously yeah it i was, was like, like come on like why can't you like why can't it, you get it right like the first time or at least the second time but no it kept trying over and over and like every time it would hurt her and yeah that part like infuriated me but um yeah how did you feel when i was in surgery like while while i was in there well yeah so um yeah so i was in the room for i don't even remember how long maybe an hour ish 
maybe two. I don't know. But yeah, the whole time I was just waiting there. I was waiting. I was waiting. <laughs> I was just waiting for someone to walk in. But I mean, I was just sitting there and then I would just like walk back and forth. And <laughs> I also stress ate. I got, we had some snacks. That's and, the first I heard that. <laughs> I mean, I was just like, like we had all these snacks. I was like, okay, well, I'll just eat. And I just kept eating and I kept eating <laughs> and eating. And then at one point, like, I was like, okay, I'm, I, I'm going to just stop. I'm going to like gain some, gain some weight. Hey, I couldn't eat. So you had to do, you know, you had to. Exactly. I was doing it for both of us. You had to us. have my back. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. So considerate. But. Were you nervous? Were you scared? Oh. I mean, honestly, no. You weren't scared? No. I was scared. I wasn't nervous. I mean, honestly, I was literally just waiting. Hmm, that's good. Yeah. I'm glad you weren't scared. Yeah, none of those emotions hit until, like, yeah, once I saw her. <coughs> like, once I saw her in the... <coughs> what is it called? The OR? The what? Where, where, in the room that her and I were in. Raya in here? Yeah. I don't know. Whatever the, the room is to... The, yeah, maybe, like, whatever room it is to... You know when they weigh her and they like measure her and all that and like cut the umbilical, well, oh, cut yeah. the rest of the umbilical, umbilical cord. Um, yeah, it was once there where I was like, it was just me and her, well, and the other nurse, but <laughs> but like in reality, just me and her, and just looking at her and watching her and watching her little moves and her little little coos. She wasn't crying. Um, she was just sitting there, just observing everything around her. And I just kind of stopped staring at her and being like, like, what in the world? Like that, like, she's my baby. And yeah, like I couldn't imagine being a father. And, and then there I was being a father for the first time. And yeah, it was just an insane experience at that, in that little room. Uh, Technically uh, I was asking if you were nervous for me, but that's okay. Oh. But, but like, yeah, I mean, that's all I, I, I had the, I had the, my story is like a little bit of it compared to what she has to share. No, but I mean, yeah, I had the belly, the baby in my belly, but I feel like. <laughs> what are you doing? But I mean, yeah. It I was had, a team effort. I did what I could being, not experiencing it, but being there for her. And I feel like I his like role really came in after like everything because. Once, like after all of that, I couldn't do anything for myself. He had to help me go to the bathroom. He had to help me shower. He had to help me get dressed. He had to help me get food. He had to help me with everything. I couldn't get up, especially that first like day after. I couldn't really sit up because I couldn't sit up. So he would have to like bring me the baby to feed her. And I, I had to feed her like every two hours or on de like or or more frequently depending on like what um just on demand so he would have to like get out of his bed and come over hand me the baby i'd feed the baby hold the baby for as long as i could stay awake and then he would come back take the baby swaddle the baby best as he could change the baby's diaper put the baby in the bassinet and then repeat over and over again all night and all day he did it with so much like grace and love, and so. I didn't always do the best job at it. <laughs> Swaddling was a was a thing, but I hated it so. <laughs> I remember, I, like I also, um, like, and she got her first little like, like what is it? No, not she doing it. Um, what is it? Um. No, we're recording for thirty minutes. So but <coughs> I'll leave it crooked. It doesn't matter. Um, but <laughs> I remember is um, in that room was the first time she got hit because <laughs> I remember I was I was carrying oh well, I was like okay not got hit like so in that room was the first time that I accidentally bumped her. And just, like what i didn't know about this <laughs> like it was just a little tiny like it was a little tiny like on like on her head but it was 
<laughs> it was because um, I was just putting her back in her, um, yeah, the bassinet, right? Yeah. I put her back in the bassinet and um, either I was taking her out or I was putting her back in, but something happened and I, I like accidentally like, you know, was too close to the, the corner of it or something and I went, <laughs> it was just a little <laughs> tiny one. And she didn't cry. Or she didn't cry or anything. She wasn't phased. Baby. So that's why, like, it didn't matter. But I was like, oh crap! I'm already, I'm already messing it up. <laughs> and she's gonna be, she's gonna be affected by this. But clearly not. What are you looking at? What, what is over here? What are you saying? What are you saying? Anyways. <laughs> but yeah. That's pretty much. That's pretty, something, something, something smells rank. Um, that's pretty much our birth story. I mean, there's way more details everywhere, but that's the gist of it. Mm -hmm. Now it's Raya's turn to share her experience. Mm -hmm. What else? What else? What do you remember about being born? <laughs> Are you looking for me to say something for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there more? <laughs> huh? Anyways, that's it you guys for this video. If you're new, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Mm -hmm. And we will see you in the next video. Yep, yep. All right. Say bye. 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 You, have to, you have to bring her. Bye. 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 bye.